Okay, so here we are on the home screen of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, and you can see my soldier in front of you. You may also notice that I have hit Master Prestige. I did that earlier today while competing in Clan Wars. That's the reason the video has come out late. It's just I got tied up in that, and then I realized I was this close to hitting Master Prestige, and I just kept going for it. It kind of paid off, too, because if you look to the right there, you'll see the BAL-27 Obsidian Steed. And if you know what this weapon is, you know that it is considered by many to be the best gun in the game. But let's go ahead and click on create a class, alright? And you can see we started off with the TDM kill confirm class last time. The only thing that's changed on this class is the Obsidian Steed was replaced. I put that in place of my Bal Inferno that I had on there. The Obsidian Steed's got some better range on it, so I switched to that. Now, the one that we're going to be concentrating on today is the All Out Objective class. This class is built for primarily Hardpoint and Domination. If you play Hardpoint and Domination a lot, this should probably be a go-to class if you're able to use a submachine gun. And I'm going to explain why. I start with the ASM-1, Reckless. Now, this one comes with Rapid Fire. It is a variant of the gun, so you may not have it. But if you do, I do love it, as long as you go ahead and throw on the grip, because with the rapid fire, you do get increased recoil, and the grip just helps you, you know, tame that and maintain your accuracy. If you're using an ASM-1 without rapid fire, you can probably get away using something like advanced rifling instead of a grip. But the gun is really a preference thing. Use whatever gun you're comfortable using, but as of right now, the BAL-27 and the ASM-1 are most definitely the best guns in the game. So now moving on to perk 1, you would notice that I still have lightweight on which is what I had on the Team Deathmatch Kill Confirm class, because I do believe in this game you must move around the map pretty fast to evade gunfights to be a harder target to hit. But in this class, it also helps out in the fact that you're going to get to the objective that much quicker. One of the things that, you, that you'll notice on this class is that I do not have low profile. The reason is, is because the enemy is going to know where we're at. We're going to be inside the hard point. We are going to be on the objective. We're going to be one of those guys where you, we don't care if you know where we're at. We are equipped to handle it. That is exactly why we have Flak Jacket equipped. What Flak Jacket does is it, it almost prevents a lot of the explosive damage that you'd receive from, you know, grenades or, or Semtex, things like that. Because once you're on a hard point or you're on a flag capping it, people are going to lob grenades at you. Flak Jacket just helps us take less explosive damage. People are going to be lobbing grenades at you non-stop while you're on these objectives, so you might as well throw that on there instead of low profile. Overcharged is not necessary because we are not using an EXO ability. I just, I just couldn't find room in here on this class for it. Danger Close, not really necessary. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's definitely something that works. However, I do find Flak Jacket and Lightweight a lot more reliable and useful than Danger Close. Perk 2, we've talked about that before. Perk 2 is really interchangeable. You could use whatever you'd like in this class, but again, I do prefer having the bigger minimap and also not showing up when I kill an enemy. That skull popping up on the enemy's map, letting them know where I'm at. Blind Eye, we've talked about this. I told you guys back in the Team Deathmatch video to create an anti-air class to have Blind Eye on it as well as Hardwired. I'm going to go back just to show you right here my anti-air class is right there. That one has blind eye and it has hardwired on it. But we're going to go back to our all-out objective class. In this one, like I said, I have peripherals on there. You could use cold-blooded if you like. Gung-ho, bad. Fast hands, don't need. Perk 3, blast suppressor, best perk in the game. We're not even going to discuss that. I've already talked about that in length. The second perk in here, I chose hardwired. Because like I said, when you're in those hard points or when you're on those flags... What's going to happen is people are going to throw those grenades, and they're also going to throw stuns in there as well. Hardwired protects the, you from those stun grenades. So if you're racing to an objective and you get hit by a stun, you're not going to get there nearly as fast as they will because you're going to be stood in the same spot. You're also immune to scramblers. You know, when they get the UAVs with the scramblers on them, you're immune to those, as well as the system hack and whatnot. But Hardwired is something I chose on this class over Toughness, just because we're going to be in a lot of close quarters things. We might be firing from the hip, and Toughness may not matter as much. Scavenger, we don't run out of ammo too much. If you do, grab another gun. Hardline, again, not even close to as valuable as Blast Suppressor, Hardwired, or Toughness on this class. The Exo ability, like I had said, we just did not have room for it in this class. It is in my Capture the Flag and Uplink class, which I'll give you a glimpse of. 
I do have a frag on this class, and this is great for when you're entering a hard point. You and make sure you cook your grenade. You hold it in your hand for two seconds, three seconds before you let it go. That way when it goes in there, they don't have time to react and it just explodes. If you do not kill them, it at least gives you an idea as to where the enemies are and it also gives you a heads up in the gunfight because you've already damaged them in, in a considerable amount. Then moving on to the score streaks. I told you in the Team Deathmatch Kill Confirm video that the UAV is probably the most important one to have here. I do believe that everybody on your team should be running this setup. You choose the UAV, you press Y to customize it, you choose the extra time, support, and threat detection. Once you all have these going on, you literally will ladder them together because you're going to get assist points and it's going to keep going to the next one. And the best part is, it doesn't matter if you die. Every 1100 points that you get, you're going to get a new one of these UAVs. You see them through walls. It's cheat mode is what it is. Everybody should be running this. The score streak number two, I use the system hack because it's really annoying once you get hit by these in game, especially when you're playing a game like Domination or Hardpoint. You have no idea where the enemy's at. You have no idea where they're coming from. So I chose the system hack. I also paid the extra 50 for a flash because if you put it on right before you're about to get into a gunfight, you're going to win that because they're going to be flashed for quite a considerable amount of time. The last one I chose is a Warbird. The Warbird, just so you know, I do pay the extra to have the aggressor on it. Every single person should have this on there. There is nothing more frustrating than being inside of an objective-based game mode and having a teammate that has to go in the corner and control their score streak. It does not help the team at all. So if you're able to, please choose a score streak that you do not have to control. You notice on all of mine, I have to control none of these, okay? If you really want to use the Warbird like I do, choose click Y, use the aggressor, let it do its thing. Also, don't use your Warbird when the hard point's inside. If they control the hard point and they're inside, don't call in your Warbird. Break the hard point, get inside there, and once they're out of it, then call it in. Be smart about it. That pretty much wraps up the all-out objective-based class setup. If you have any questions in regards to this, I'd be more than happy to answer them in the comments section. What I'm going to do now is kind of show you the rest of the classes that I have set up. I do have the TDM KC one there. I also have Anchor. This is if you're more of an assault rifle player and you're not necessarily in the objective, but you're more holding down the areas around it, ensuring that people do not get to those hard points. This is one of my favorite classes to use when I'm in an assault rifle type of mood and wanting to protect a hard point rather than be inside of it. Capture the flag and uplink. You can pause the video here so that you can see my class setup, but I do love this one. You get the overcharge down there along with the overclock. You are fast and it lasts so long. If you're running a flag or if you are playing uplink and you have the satellite, it's hard to catch you. I'll just say that. And again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section and go ahead and do this with your classes. Go ahead and name them. Just let you know yourself know if you're in a tough situation, which one you go to. All right. I have a sniper class. I have my anti-air class. I have my try-hard classes. And then I have an all-gun class. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I do come out with one Call of Duty video a week, as well as one other personal video of the week. And this next one coming up, I have a feeling all of you Call of Duty and gaming fans are going to love it. Until next time, YouTube.